Hello everybody, uh, my name is John and this is the first in my series of videos exploring the VEX Tournament Manager software for use in the VEX Robotics Competition. Uh, in this video we're going to be covering creating the tournament file using the Tournament Creation Wizard and also uh, connecting the Tournament Manager software uh, across multiple computers so that you can use multiple computers at your event. So let's get started and the first thing we're going to do is open the Tournament Manager software. And when we do that, we're presented with this screen. Uh, we're going to create a new tournament, and that will open the Tournament Creation Wizard. The first thing to do is save it somewhere, um, the database file for the tournament, and we're going to give it some more descriptive name, such as video.db, and we'll hit save. We'll start the server, and then shortly we will be presented with the wizard. Uh, so we'll walk through the wizard here. Um, this is just a welcome screen. Um, if the event, uh, if the tournament is listed on robotevents.com, then here you can enter um, this information which is available on robotevents.com on the configuration page for your event. Uh, this example tournament, of course, is not listed on robotevents.com. So we're just going to hit next. Uh, here we're going to select the program. It's going to be VEX Robotics Competition. Um, on this screen, we select the tournament type. Uh, and which option we choose here will influence how much we can configure and customize the tournament. Um, in this case, we're going to select medium. Uh, any event that has more than one field uh, will probably want to be a medium tournament, unless it's very large. Uh, but that's outside the scope of this video, so most tournaments will select medium here. Uh, we're now going to give the event a name. Uh, in this case, that'll be video test and uh, a password, which we'll need to enter on other computers to connect uh, to tournament manager over the network. Make that video. Uh, this screen relates to league play, which is outside the scope of this series, so we're just going to continue. Uh, here we select what game we're playing uh, for scoring purposes. In this case, we're going to be playing the current year's game, which is in the zone. And uh, now in this screen, we have to specify which teams are in the tournament. Now, uh, if we were pulling this data down from robot events, if we had entered the robot events data in earlier, uh, this, I believe, would be automatically filled in. But since we're not, uh, we have to specify um, the teams some other way. So one thing we can do is hit generate teams and specify a number of teams and that will uh, generate some generic team names for us. Uh, but we can also import uh, a CSV file containing some team data and uh, I've made up some team data for that purpose so we're going to import that file and here we have a bunch of non-existent uh, teams, uh, names and numbers for testing purposes. So we'll hit next. Now here we're going to configure um, the elimination tournament. Uh, we can select the number of alliances. That's almost always eight. Um, at some very large tournaments, there'll be like a round of 16, but you know, for almost all events, that'll be eight. Uh, teams per alliance is usually three. At some smaller tournaments, uh, it'll be two, but mostly three. Uh, unbalanced alliances, uh, this only comes up if there aren't enough teams to fill every alliance with the number of teams per elimination alliance. So for example, in this case, if we had fewer than 24 teams, that would be a problem because there wouldn't be enough for three teams per alliance. Uh, but that's not going to apply here. And then lastly, alliance se selection audience display. Uh, I'd like to choose order by ranking because it sort of helps the, the teams make uh, quick judgments when necessary by looking at that display. So we'll continue. Uh, field sets are sort of logical the way the Tournament Manager software groups uh, fields logically. Uh, almost all events will only need one field set unless um, unless you're running multiple uh, matches at the same time, uh, you only need one field set. And uh, each field set can consist of multiple fields uh, in which matches are run sequentially. So you give each field set a name. Uh, the default is field control. Uh, I like to use something a little more um, 
specific. So we'll call this one main field set. And then within each field set, you can add a number of fields. Uh, we have just two fields here, and they're called field one and field two. Uh, next up, skills challenges. Um, we're going to have in this example tournament one skills challenge field, and each team will get two attempts uh, per skills challenge. So that's two attempts at robot skills, or at driver skills, and two attempts at programming skills. Uh, now we can set up logical uh, pit displays, and these are used to uh, display various types of information uh, to teams in the pits. So you can create a number of logical pit displays, each of which can be shown on one or more physical displays. So we're going to create, in this case, four different displays, and uh, it's a good idea to name them in some uh, sort of way that gives you some information. So for example, you might name them after uh, their location in the pits, or in this case, we're going to name them after what they will usually show. So we'll create one called rankings, which will by default show the rankings. We'll create another called schedule, which will by default show the schedule. Uh, maybe we'll create a third called skills rankings, which will show the skills rankings by default. And I like to have a spare, just in case. And that will display the logo screen by default. So let's hit next. So now it's time to create the match schedule. So on this screen, we're going to specify one or more blocks of time during which we want to hold practice or qualification matches, and also how often within those blocks we want to hold a match. So uh, in this example, let's say the tournament is on the 18th, and we'll start qualification matches at 9.45 a.m., and in the first block it'll run until noon. And in that time, we'll hold a match every five minutes, and we'll tell it it's qualification matches. And we'll add that time block. And then uh, at noon, maybe we'll take a half hour break for lunch. So we'll come back at 12.30, and we'll resume running qualifying matches until 2.30. And after lunch, hopefully everyone will be warmed up. All the teams will be uh, in the groove, so maybe we can hold matches a little more often, let's say every four minutes then. And again, that's qualification matches, and we'll add that. So that'll give us time for a total of 57 matches, which should be 7 qualification matches per team, which is a good number. So now we'll hit next, and now it's time to actually generate the match schedule. So we'll do that by hitting Create Qualification Matches. That'll take a couple seconds, and you can see it's created a total of 53 matches, uh, 7 matches per team, and we can see some information uh, in this window. Uh, so that's some nice statistics. Now we'll hit next. Uh, and we're going to specify which awards we're giving out. So uh, there are a number of awards here. You can add custom awards as well if you like. Uh, we are going to give out, uh, obviously, three tournament champions, uh, the Excellence Award, uh, Design, we're not going to do Judges, but we will do Sportsmanship. And yeah, those are all the awards. So we'll hit next. Uh, web publishing, again, if your event is officially on robot events, you can uh, show match results live on the website or in the Vexvia app. This event is not on robot events, so we're not going to do that. And uh, this is the final screen in the setup wizard. Um, this checkbox that says preserve skills challenge scores, do not delete them. Uh, if you run this wizard again, uh, like after you've recorded some skills challenge scores, then you can choose whether or not to delete them. Um, in this case, we haven't run any skills challenge matches yet, so it doesn't matter what we uh, hit. And now we'll hit Finish. And this will bring us into the main window of the Tournament Manager. So that's it for running the Tournament Creation Wizard. Um, one more thing we're going to cover in this video is using the Tournament Manager with multiple computers. So this computer that we've just opened the file on is sort of the server and we can connect to that server from the Tournament Manager software on other computers on the same local network. So to do that, uh, we're going to do a couple of things. First is we're going to find the local IP address of this computer, and that's visible at help get IP address. So there's that. And then also we'll need the password that we created. 
So if you don't remember that, you can see that at Tools, Options, General, and there's the password. And so now let's go to another computer. Okay, here we are on another computer, and we've opened the Tournament Manager, and we're going to hit Connect to a Remote Server. And you can see here we can enter the IP address, or it will discover servers automatically. So here is the server, and then we'll enter the password, and hit Continue. And after doing that, uh, we've connected to the server uh, from the Tournament Manager software on this computer, and so we can do anything uh, relating to the tournament on this other computer as well, and you can connect any number of computers to the server uh, to be managing the tournament from various locations throughout the venue. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be discussing uh, the different types of uh, user-facing displays that are available in the Tournament Manager software and how to manage them.